We all know that real estate has created more millionaires than any other industry on the planet. We also know that it has created a lot of heartache due to mismanagement, overborrowing, and just simple life events that happen to all of us. Welcome to the Cash Flow Pro Podcast. My name is Casey Brown, and I am your fearless leader. And although we might be bourbon sipping and at times foul mouth Southerners, we will always do our best to be honest, straightforward, and due diligent with all of the information we pass along to you. Welcome to the show. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of Cash Flow Pro, your daily real estate investing podcast and YouTube channel. I am here today with Dan Krasinowski of BV Capital and also founding vice president of Rocket Dollar. Rocket Dollar is a, a self-directed IRA company. I'm obviously going to let Dan get into what it is, what it is not, how it works, and so on and so forth, because one question that we get all the time, it's almost like a, it's almost like nonstop, really, probably at least once or twice a week is I have an IRA. I've been told that I can possibly use it to buy real estate or whatever, you know, the likes of a one off asset or in a fund. Uh, either way, you can control it. Let's say that. And with that question, I said, Dan, the man, Dan, I need you to come on the podcast and let's do some explaining and let's see where we go from here. So Dan, welcome to the show. How are you today? Awesome, Casey. Great to be with you all today. And I love your background. I know I have a, a beautiful teal door here, but uh, you know, it keeps it cool. <laughs> summer, so I'm putting my uh, myself over the pretty for now. Yeah, yeah. I had to do something to dress the the old moneymaker here up. You know, I was like, well, they're not really going to care anything about looking at me. So why don't we give them something nice to look at, especially uh, those of you that are watching on videos. So, so Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know we've met a time or two. We've obviously talked on LinkedIn several times. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So the audience has some context to where you came from, what you got going. And then, man, I want to spend a lot of time talking about how people get from point A to point Z on uh, figuring out how to use their own IRA to buy real estate. Absolutely. So, you know, I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Dad was a high school principal. Mom was a social worker. So I feel like a lot of us Gen Xers and older folks out there, you know, <laughs> you go work, max out your 401k and live a good life. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, up until 2008, I was, you know, living the dream. Did my undergrad at Wharton. Uh, my, my politics for the day, I say I rode with Trump Jr. And then I played on little, it's the same little league field as Biden, uh, probably about 100 <laughs> years after him. But, uh, you know, all good stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, I was in the Northeast, GE Merrill Lynch. And uh, but I always had a feeling there was something a little bit more out there, particularly for my retirement than, say, the Fidelity Year 2060 target fund. Uh with that, I was co-best men in a wedding, asked this gentleman what he does. And he said, I flipped houses. I said, that's great. He's, I'm like, what does that mean? He said, well, 15%. I'm like, interesting. And then he said, did you know you can use your retirement dollars? And for me, this is kind of when the world's, you know, the big light bulb went off. And I said, wow, that must be a lot of money, which we've learned is in literally in the tens of trillions of dollars that uh, is not, I like to say, not yet in private assets that could be used for uh you know, for us as individuals to have that benefit of owning a piece of real estate. So that's some quick background on how I got into it. And then from there, uh, for the past decade, we've been in Austin, Texas. So I like to feel I was doing crowdfunding before the Jobs Act, uh, you know, investing little chips in a whole bunch of different real estate plays for about the past decade before even some of the crowdfunding sites. And you know, some other folks that I, I've known and respected, whether it's self-storage or their asset classes, uh, raising capital for them. So I, I've really benefited from being around this ecosystem for about uh, the past decade. And two stops, which I think are relevant for our chat here today. One was which uh, being early on at Rocket Dollar, uh, an advisor investor, basically employee number one, as we really look to democratize the ability to have a self-directed IRA, a solo 401k. And then ultimately, also, I am licensed under BB Capital, a broker dealer out of uh, uh, Dallas, Texas. So some, you know, good Texas real estate. There you so, go. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be here with you. Yeah, well, we're certainly glad to have you. And uh, again, I want to, I know we're not going to be able to unbox the whole um 
theories and ideas and how to do, you know, a lot of the, but I want for folks to get some, some type of a, of a beginning, I, an idea of where they need to begin when, because I know, like, as I told you, and, and I'm working towards educating myself in, in this whole space as well. And, and recently we, I have some family that, that has decided to, to, to take the dive and, and, and go into the self-directed world. Um, and so I just know that like there was, there's money out there that's earmarked as you and I had said. So just like you said, you got 401k, you got, uh, uh, IRAs, you got annuities, you've got just on the list goes on and on and on, uh, SEP IRA, you know, we all hear all of these terms all of the time. Now, how does one, what's the first step somebody needs to take if they're like, man, I've been putting my money into this program all these years. What is the first step somebody needs to take to say, man, I want to take that money and I want to put it into uh, an apartment building that somebody is syndicating at 123 Main Street? Yeah. I mean, I think the first step is, you know, today listening to this, being made aware is a huge first step. I mean, it doesn't behoove big Wall Street to tell you about this. So you don't hear about it. Uh, the second thing is just to be aware of, I think, the rules. And they're, they're pretty basic. Uh, you know, what can you do with this pool of money? No life insurance, no collectibles. Another thing is not you or your linear family. So what does that mean? Um, not your primary residence, not a place you're going to go to on the weekends. Uh, not a beach house, you know, that grandma and grandpa stay in, uh, not your kids lemonade stand startup, everything else, maybe cannabis on the side, uh, you can do with your retirement dollars. And for the past 50 years, investing passively in real estate has been, you know, the most common transaction. So I think from here, just the awareness of it. And then secondly, um, as you alluded to, uh, I do have ties with rocket dollar, uh, two things. There's an award-winning knowledge base, and I hate to call it an FAQ, but sure, there's a lot of questions and answers, but it really gets down with graphs and such to to get a feel of how this works. And you know, whether it's Rocket Dollar or another shop, book a call with one of the experts here to say, here's my situation. Uh, you know, Do I qualify? And the answer majority of the time is yes, to open an account almost always. If you have a U.S. address, at least a self-directed IRA, and then for our self-employed friends, our realtors, et cetera, uh, the question is, sure, should I consider a solo 401k, which all else equals is the more powerful of the two accounts. So this is kind of the chain of how it goes. And then finally, uh, particularly if you are going to be a, an active investor, I would look for two things. One is uh, accounts that offer checkbook control. So for us old folks on here, yeah, it's like a checkbook. You invest in what you want, when you want. Uh, vis-a-vis having a third party, I like to say checking in with mom and dad before you can go uh, and then finally, just from a pricing structure, uh, I think a lot of folks post COVID, they say, hey, what's simple? We got a lot of tech behind it. Is it a flat pricing or are you going to charge me every time I do a transaction or if the value of my assets go up? So those are some of the questions I would ask. And uh, do you know. so when we step step, go back one one notch there to where I was when I mentioned with all the different types of accounts, um, the. IRA, uh, SEP IRA, 401k, annuities, blah, 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 blah. Are all of those eligible to be moved to a self-directed? And I'm going to say a self-directed situation because is there, is it specifically a self-directed IRA, IRA or is it, what is? No, there's two types of accounts. So let's work backwards. So the self-directed IRA, SD IRA, that's kind of the Gatorade term. That's been around forever. Most are with custodians. The likes of a rocket dollar would do a checkbook control self-directed IRA. Uh, The other account, the solo 401k, also known as the individual 401k, uh, some folks call it the QRP. Uh, By default, this is you managing your own plan, abiding to the rules that we just talked about. So we we can talk on contributions and such later, but going back to your question, what can go in? Uh, The most basic example, you know, in layman's terms is your old 401k. So you worked at company ABC, it was a 401k, you left, they moved it to Fidelity or Vanguard in a rollover IRA. Yes, that money can move into a self-directed account. Uh, A TSP for our military friends out there, a a SEP. Uh, Annuities, not as much annuities, uh, 
there's a lot of detail, and a lot of different plans, some insurance plans. But, you know, generally speaking, I'd say from move money that you're going to transfer or roll over, think of your old company's 401k. And then from contribution, uh, it depends, frankly, if you have qualified self-employed income and are doing the solo 401k route or not for how much that you can potentially contribute. Okay. So you can continue to contribute even after it's moved over to a self-directed IRA, right? Uh, absolutely, yes. And, uh, you know, I think now we're up to 7,000-ish for a self-directed IRA. With the solo 401k, uh, this is, you know, for, a, let's just say, a, a husband-wife team uh, without W-2 employees, you can be well over 100000 in a year. So let's just say also for a rock star realtor, uh you know, right off the bat, like your your W two friends, uh, you're contributing that you know, call it twenty thousand or so, and then in addition, twenty percent of your uh, net earnings here. So it's very uh, my point. And that's post tax money, but then it grows tax. So, so this free. would be uh, you can you can choose. So there's a Roth. So in the world of self-directed IRAs, uh, you can contribute pre-tax. If you're under a certain income limit, you can do a self-directed Roth IRA. A separate thing you can do is a Roth conversion, meaning you would open up a self-directed IRA traditional pre-tax and then move into a Roth. That said, let's say right now, uh, a lot of times uh, I would go back to your current custodian, do your contribution, do the conversion with there, and then say go Roth IRA to Roth self-directed IRA. Uh, with the solo 401k, what I love about this is that you uh, can have two checking accounts, one for pre-tax traditional and then another one for Roth, where literally on the spot you can do a Roth conversion. So let's just do let's just have a basic example here on the solo 401k. Let's say, you know, you, you make 300k as a rock star realtor, you're a one woman shop. Uh, you know, right off the bat, uh, you defer the 20500 like your W-2 friends. If you're over 50, you can add another 6500 And then 20% of your net earnings here. So let's just say, uh, you know, you're middle-aged. By this equation, you can contribute 60000 right off the bat. And that's irrespective of what you might, you know, kind of roll over or transfer in from previous 401ks. Okay. And then... Here, once the account is funded, let's just say, hey, you know, I have a really good feeling in the start if I'm going to invest 10K, you do that Roth conversion, come tax time, it's a 1099 hour, you'll pay taxes on the 10,000, but the spirit, as with any investment, when you do in Roth conversion, you want to pay taxes on the little C today, not the big tree in the future. Okay, so it grows tax deferred. It gr if you do a Roth, yes. You do a Roth, it yeah. Gross tax deferred, but if you do a Roth, actually, it's, you're paying the taxes today, not in the future. Just to be clear, a traditional, aka pre-tax, um, yeah, you are going to pay in that balance in your 60s or 70s. So it, it, it's the rules are the same from a high level of traditional versus Roth. Okay, so yeah, all right. Now, without the limits and everything, so you go out, you earn $2, you decide you want to invest one. You take one, you take that dollar, you put it into a Roth, then you take that, then you, where do that, where does somebody go to open a Roth? They have to go to a financial consult or a financial advisor, right? No, and this is a, this is a great misconception. So, uh, to, to open a Roth. So once again, it's based on income limits if you want a Roth IRA. And that's whether it's a Roth IRA or self-directed. Uh, the nice thing here is, once again, another thing that they don't teach even in business school here uh, is that, yeah, the likes of a rocket dollar, one of these custodians, you can open an account and contribute directly into a self-directed IRA. So you don't have to go, I'd say, another stop on the train as, you know, I'm, to your point, hey, I work for a company, now I need a financial advisor. I'm like, ooh, I want to invest in, you know, a private real estate deal. Now I got to open a self-directed over here uh they could come directly to to a self-directed company open it all up correct yes and then obviously if they had money in their fidelity vanguard etc their custodian combine it exactly yeah and there, there, you know there's some detail based on everybody's personal situation so i don't want to give a blanket statement but you know the point here i think that we're showing is that um you don't need the typical sort of middleman to set it up and frankly you know with the likes of a rocket dollar the setup side 
Uh, I think it's five minutes. You know, everything is tech friendly, e-sign friendly. There will be a few weeks as things get processed, the checkbook portion of your account. But that initial point, it's not like as some people think, well, I got to spend a few hours with a financial advisor, old school sign things, boom, boom, boom. The process is streamlined from there. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's, that was the point I was wanting to get to. So somebody goes out, works, earns $2, decides they want to invest one. They take one, they bring it to rocket dollar, start a, a Roth IRA, take that $1, a couple of weeks goes by, take that dollar and they can go buy a dollar's worth of real estate. Now, again, I know there's some technicalities and stuff about how the money goes and how it comes back and so on and so forth. As far as, as far as keeping it tax keeping the gains tax deferred, um, that makes perfect sense. So it's like, it's, it's really streamlined from beginning all the way to buying the real estate with the money. Um, and that I think is, is the biggest, and let's be honest, the financial industry in general, I feel like is when you get way down into the weeds of it, it's very, very simple. I think they've done a very, very good job of overcomplicating everything in order to create confusion because we all know that confusion equals profits. Now, with that being said, I'm not suggesting that we unbundle the entire financial industry and say that there's not some things that go on that you definitely need certain people for, but at the same time, um, when we when we start getting advisors on board with saying, hey, these real estate syndications and these real estate investments are viable, these are actual things you can invest in instead of just investing in a in a, a because I don't even know. So if I go out today, if I go out today, get a financial advisor and I tell that financial advisor, I want to buy uh, uh, X number of shares in such and such fund. I'm, they get, I mean, what's the commission on that? 10%? 15%? I mean, I don't know. You got my blood boiling here that I, I had to turn the camera off just because of, you know, that sort of situation. Uh, it's a lot. You're right. And, you know, the question is, um, and I value everybody doing what they do for their livelihood, but, uh, you know, you wonder what some of that information you can also get from a quick Google search online. So it, it does... Uh, it definitely varies. I mean, no doubt, no doubt about it here. Um, I hope I got your blood boiling in a good way. Uh, <laughs> you did, my friend. Not a not a way where you're upset with me because I'm just we just try to dig through and find out what's best for the listeners and what's best for uh, for people to to be able to you know because the thing is is that 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 you know when I when I was I was Series Three licensed years ago um, when I first got out of college and and realized it was very difficult to not only was the risk on commodities so high um it was virtually un a loss was almost unpalatable period because it was the margin calls and so on but anyway it was big it was a deal where i got licensed and i was like yeah i'm gonna go out i'm gonna t help some farmers take care of their hedging and their risk analysis man the, the time involved versus the 40 dollars commission for selling one contract was absolutely not even anywhere near but we took an oath or we, we took a, whatever it was, signed a pledge, whatever the case was to, to not quote unquote churn for commissions. That means go in, buy something, you know, you, there, there's a possibility that people could go in if you're in a fund and go buy shares of uh, three different cola companies and then sell them and buy and sell them and buy and sell them and, and claim to be creating gains for their investors. When in fact the gains are, on the, the commission side of the trade. And again, we all sign a pledge. We take an oath, whatever it was to not do that. Now, with that being said, I feel like that pledge or that, uh, that idea basically just lengthened that process of churning commissions. It basically says, oh, okay, Hey, we're not going to churn them real fast. We're going to take them. We're going to confuse the hell out of them. And then we're going to put all their money into this, 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 and this. And then on top of that, Dan, you know what we're going to do? Then we're going to claim you can't invest in real estate with your retirement money because hell taxes lead it all up. You don't even want to do that. Just, just leave your money here with me. Just leave it here with me and I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I was just, I, I was, I, I was so enamored at the idea 
I, I'm sorry I'm taking up your time talking, but I feel like I'm trying to 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 give some justification to, hey, you don't just because you have a self-directed IRA does not mean you have to go out and buy or invest in real estate, period. But you know what it does do? It gives you control. Mm -hmm. It gives you the idea that, hey, and I, and I remember that when I graduated college, Dan, I, I went out there and I was like, all right, I know I got to go start a I got to go start a retirement account. That, that was that was the first, you know, that was one of the first things that were go start a retirement account. You're going to start working. Here we go. Well, you go in there and they give you these 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 this list of funds that you can put whatever percentage you want to put in there. Then they give you this prospectus, which by law has to be given. And and it's and it's and it's this. So I walk out of the financial advisor's office with a two foot pile of papers, the of which probably 98% of I walked right out and dumped them right in a dumpster because who the hell wants to sit and read all that stuff? And not only that, when you got all the way down to it, these funds were, were coded. They were coded letters and such and such fund Q one, two, three to the X. And it's just like, there's so much confusion there, but what it boils down to is, is they're funneling all this money into one spot and then they're putting it into a corporation the same as you could be putting your money into a real estate deal where you can go out and you can see it, you can smell it, you can look at it, you can talk to it, you can take pictures next to it, you can do whatever the hell you want to do with your piece of real estate. Absolutely. Now, I'm off my soapbox, I think. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a chance to get the hell back up on your soapbox. Sure. And for, I love what you shared. and. You're right. So a lot of folks, what one may do with your personal money, let's say you bought a piece of land, you bought a rental house at the beach. Uh, a lot of folks, to your point, Case, think that, well, retirement dollars are sacred and have to be in some mutual fund or this diversified. I, this opens up the curtain on the Wizard of Oz to say, no, in reality, what and I shared the limitations before, but basically whatever you want to do passively as a passive hands-off investor with your piggy bank checking account money, you can now do with your retirement funds. And that's super, super powerful. So outside of, to your point, real estate, you can see, feel, touch right here. I mean, my personal portfolio, um, I've invested in female entrepreneurs. I've invested with folks on the other side of the track. So all with my retirement dollars. So I'm seeing that impact now, not that I'm 75 and you know finally pulling out of my 401k or 72 with RMDs, uh, I'm active with a few startups. I'm active in deals that I believe that give me diversification because I feel real estate is, is a strong asset. So I've been able to do this with my retirement dollars vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, sitting in some fund somewhere uh, with companies that you're right, the stack is this big and I don't have the time, effort or energy uh, or, you know, a lot of times, frankly, natural interests. There's not many, you know, stock analysts out there. Most folks, Joe, Jane, America are not. They have real estate. There's you know a friend they want to support. There's a private loan. The beauty here is knowing you can tap into a portion. Uh, there's not an exact number or what percentage that you want for your self-directed account. So super, super powerful. Uh, and I always like to give a fun example. Uh, a colleague of mine just retired from American Airlines, You know, bought a condo in the Caymans, had a million dollars in his 401k, and said, you know, the next, I'm building one, two, three, four, I'm in building five, I'm going to buy a condo at each of those. And they're literally, he can walk up and down the street, see his retirement, collect the rent check. And that's, and see, and that's, that's the other part of this is, is exactly what you just said. The other part of, of, of these, of this, this whole fund thing, or like, like, again, one of the big retirement companies you walk in sit down on their desk and they confuse the hell out of you hand you pile of papers and send you out um hi this is casey brown host of the cash flow pro podcast and youtube channel have you been thinking about investing in real estate but just don't know where to begin i'd like to help by inviting you to check out our website at www.3000capital.com there you will find an array of material that will help you learn all about real estate syndication and while you're there, be sure to check out our free video series download titled Five Must Know Keys to Success in Passive Real Estate Investing. I'd also like to personally thank you for making Cashflow Pro part of your day. Now, back to the show. But 
with the real estate. So, so here's the, he, this was another thought that I had. And again, we're, we're, we're not covering much of the, of the tame, easy stuff. But so the thing is, is that if I take my retirement account and I go buy like, like a cola company stock, for instance, is all obviously going to be a portion of a fund, whatever that, that in theory, that, that cola stock could go to zero. I mean, right. And, and part of the real estate, my, my justification for investing in real estate is there's always dirt. It's all built on dirt. And if you don't have any of this, you have the lot that all of this set on. Now you likely had insurance and you likely had other things that protect the building and structure itself. But the thing is, is that show me an insurance that, that a cola company has or a, or a, a, a chair manufacturer or, or a microphone man, show me an insurance policy that they have that's going to protect your investment. Yeah, great point. I mean, you're right. And we, we have seen examples where stocks, you know, have gone close to zero and, and, you know, just to obviously any, any asset, any experience, um, you know, think of a ground up development. There are certain things that could go off with an inexperienced, you know, more so an inexperienced operator. Uh, that said, you're right. Um, when Mark Twain said there's dirt, you know, they're not making any more of it. And uh, you hear that in certain real estate submarkets here uh, while things are, are so attractive. So the other thing I really like in, in this market, so there's a lot of volatility, uh, you know, high yield stocks you hear. Great. Okay. High yield, high dividend. But let's just say the stock's trading at 10 and goes down to eight, well, yikes, you know, that went down 20%, even if your yield originally call it was 5%. So you're down to, you're up 50 cents. Obviously the stock could go up, maybe, maybe not over time. Whereas in real estate as a passive investor, let's say same deal, you know, you invest it, keep the number simple, 10K in a syndication. Um, you kind of keep that at par. You're getting your distributions a lot. You're waiting for sale. Uh, once again, things, especially on a development, there, there could be some issues, but with, with the validated, I think, verified operator, uh, the nice thing is, is it's almost like a bond in a way that your principal really doesn't change until sale. And a lot of times with the value add, you are going to get dividends, distributions with them. And hey, man, show me any real estate trend that you want to show me, I don't care if you show me the derivative of something, mm -hmm. show me a real estate trend that has ever over time shown a negative return at the end. You can like, we always use this example. People talk about, you know, back in 2006, I say, we, I, my listeners hear this all the time, Dan, I'm going to tell it to you. we we'll go back to 06, Right. There was never going to be another bad day. The market was ultra, ultra, like everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is like we're in heaven, right? Sure. 07, 08 come around the corner and punched us right in the gut. And all of a sudden now your real estate is worth 25% less, right? Now, remember 06 was the highest real estate. You know, we, we were in a, a bull, like everything was just booming. Now, 2022, fast forward to 2022. So we started 06. We had 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, where things were eh, iffy. Tell me a single piece of real estate right now that you know of that you would not immediately with virtually little due diligence take at 2006's price. <laughs> the highest price that it ever was in 06. We since have had what we all know to be a quote unquote financial disaster period, whatever. And again, there's not a, there's not anything out there that somebody wouldn't take at two at the price that it was in 06. And I say all of that because it brings back to the point, you know, we're and how many companies did people invest in through whatever funds are broke out of business, sold off the assets to pay the bankruptcy trustee since then. And that's, that's my argument, guys. That's, and that, that, Dan, I mean, I know that has to be the crux of your all's argument for why people need to not only have a self directed IRA, but be investing in real estate. Yeah. I mean, I like to go back is what folks, 
tend to do with your non-retirement dollars is real estate. It's land, it's, it's a rental. Uh, why not do that with your retirement dollars? You could, it's legal. It's been around for 15 years. But nobody, years. that's the, there again, it's the, the financial <laughs> lobby, the financial industry lobby. But yeah, I mean, listen, we're in a post COVID world. I mean, I'm not a successful TikToker yet, but you know, a lot of us are here. We're sharing this education. The world's also opening up for shows. I've noticed what, what uh, warms my heart is you know, I'm here in Austin, Texas. We have a, a weekly lunch, a monthly evening dinner. Uh, you know, many folks that are, you know, heads down nine to five doctors, engineers, et cetera. Well, they're coming to these evening shows when they could, or they're sneaking out during the lunchtime. So as I said, the, um, you know, the, the curtain's been pulled on the wizard of Oz right now. It says folks, I've had a fair number of friends where they said, you know, I want to retire early and get to 10,000 doors. Well, the first step, a lot of them say, what is this thing called passive investing? Oh my gosh, I can use my retirement. I've had this, I just left you know, here in Austin, Dell, after 20 years, I have a million dollars. Yes, you can use that to start to get to know some sponsors at a very intimate level. So, uh, you know, the wave is coming, I'd say, as the younger generation builds up these assets. Uh, you know, I'm happy we were talking about the solo 401k with a lot of these folks self-employed. The solo K is a great uh, account, a great way to contribute, to build up your retirement, to invest in stuff that you, once again, are passionate about and or see, feel, hear, touch, etc. Uh, which once again, real estate is one of those. So, and the final point I'd like to share, and you know, I've been fortunate to be invited to a fair number of family office shows. And these guys, even in front of open doors, will say, you know, we have less than 10% of our portfolio in stocks and bonds. We've made this through, you know, private company and real estate. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's been, um, you know, the bold face headline for hundreds of years here. So, yeah. And that's, and I think the, the more that, that the word gets out and is spread among, among listeners, just like listeners to my podcast and listeners to any other, any other idea of just saying, you know, take control of your financial future because otherwise your financial future are, is in the hands of people who I can assure you, you can't get in contact with if you have an issue. You can't pick up the phone and call the CEO of of any of the cola companies that I've as that's just kind of been what I've stomped on here in this podcast. But but take you know, or even if you invest in a real estate investment trust, pick up the phone and call the guy and say, "Hey, man, what's going on with this apartment building?" Because I can guarantee you, you're going to get a voicemail and you're probably not going to get a call back. So, not saying that all syndicators can stop and call you, but during your quarterly meeting with them or your quarterly webinar or quarterly web meeting with them, you ought to be able to get the answer to quite a few of the questions that potentially you have. And so I say all of that, I know, Dan, we, we didn't even get to BV capital and uh, the stuff there. So I'd like to give you just, just, uh, you know, honestly, man, I feel like the, the production here has been, it has got, if it does nothing more than just get people to say, Hey, I'm going to take back control of my stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of the money that I earned, you know, I feel like we've had a win if we can get some of that, some people to just, just understand that. And I, think the right. I think that's dynamite first step. And, uh, you know, we talk about like versus trust, want versus do it, it's, a uh, you know, and we're not saying do it on hundred percent of your portfolio, pick a number that's, and a lot of times, I mean, case I'm sure a lot of folks, uh, that you talk to on a regular basis, they're going to kind of triangulate all these conversations and say, yeah, great. You know, come, I come in with you at a hundred K sure. And you know, maybe that's 10% of yep. their million dollar 401k. You can start there is my point. You yeah. can start, I'd say in good faith, if you have 10 K and you know, you, your head and heart is to do different things with crowdfunding and to get a feel. And that's the way that you kind of get the feel of a market. Um, I think that's a pretty fair number. You know, well, and you made a comment earlier about just getting to know some sponsors. Yeah. Get, get, get out there and get to know. That's what we did when we set up our fund was we got out and got to know some sponsors, you know, because we got to know these people on a human level. Like, Hey man, what, what, what's your favorite beer? Or what's your, you know, what are you like doing on the weekends or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. And there's two, uh, so a funny and then a secret, you know, the funny, you're right in the private investment world, a uh, lot of sponsors, they do road shows on a regular basis. And what it is, it's to go to sit at a bar at a barbecue and talk. 
we're not, it's not heavy pitching. It's just cool. You know, I'm in town or once a quarter, uh, you know, the principals fly into town. Uh, I know some of the shops that your fund is in, these guys are road warriors, not a heavy sell. It's just saying, Hey guys, what's going on? What are you thinking about? What can we be doing better? Uh, and you know, lo and behold, after a few of these, the trust builds up, they're likely to bring a friend along. So, you know, that's just one thing I think great that we do on the private side. Uh, Secondly, and here's my little secret for folks, is the great benefit of using your solo 401k, self-directed IRA, is getting in with good sponsors. Um, so I go hold back the like versus trust analogy. Yeah, trust is mutually when money moves. Uh, that said, a lot of great sponsors, it's difficult to get into their sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth deal. Why is that? People in their first five deals had a great experience. They say, yeah, I'm going to double down or add a zero. So in this weird way, uh, the best of breed sponsors, you don't really hear about them till they're, you know, the deal's kind of consummated or sold. So this is a really good way if you, um, you know, have a good feeling about a sponsor to probably get in at their minimum. And I know a lot of sponsors tend to have flexibility. Uh, first of all, great experience with different custodians and providers like Rocket Dollar, but also flexibility maybe on you know, the initial amount that could be put in, especially let's say, hey, I have a random, your minimum said 50, I have a random 40,000 in my Roth IRA. A lot of sponsors are going to say yes to that. If yeah, this is yeah, yeah. If you're going forward. So just a brief example, uh, a good way to get, I think, folks that you really want to bet on. And then finally for diversification here, and, you know, Casey, I admire what, what you guys do a lot because it, it's, um, I think you picked great asset classes. Uh, you know, I'm obviously a huge fan of self-storage. I feel industrial from the investor hat provides that same you know level of comfort and diversification also as we hit the 2020s over the next few years. So I think the what you guys do in terms of your diligence, what you've offered in your fund is also warm and comforting for folks that just want to dip their toe, but you know not even a single deal, not even a single sponsor, but a fund. Uh, this is also a really good first step on hard assets with your retirement dollars. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And I know that, that, that I want to do another show in a relative short, short time frame of, of, and have you explained because we don't have a lot of industrial talk here and I've got some, some pretty sizable questions that, mm -hmm. that need to be covered as far as like, not, not, not for myself and my fund or our fund, you know, for my, me and my investors necessarily, but for those out there who might consider, uh, you know, the, the idea that they could be in industrial type properties, oh. um, especially if, because, you know, there's just, there's a lot of stuff that we Americans, um, that, that, that's what some of the burning questions that I've got. So Dan, uh, I want to, th first off, I want to thank you for your time today. I know you're, you're probably one of the busiest guys I know, as far as, as far as the hats that you wear and, and the moving around that you do and, and the places in the country that we always see you at. Um, but, uh, real quick, uh, what is, and I'm going to ask you the couple of questions that we ask every guest that comes on the show, just, just for the, the, the human element to give to the listeners uh, so that they know we're not just uh, talking heads. Right. Um, what is the best book that you have recently read or are currently reading? Yeah. So, uh, two books, uh, Ray Dalio, Changing World <laughs> Order, and then, uh, Friedman, the New York Times author, The Storm Before the Calm. Uh, for anybody with even a little bit of left brain out there, I, I think you're really going to enjoy these. If it, listen, we're in the 2020s. The U.S. is doing a certain cycle. And to give away a little bit of Friedman's, there's a, a 50 year economic cycle, an 80 year kind of political socio. And the 2020s is the first time they're converging. Uh, I, I think everybody on this, you know, will enjoy it. Good. Awesome, man. That's that's really good. So and uh, another uh, part of our human element, what is the best uh, vacation or a dream vacation that you have either taken or hope to take? Ooh, uh, so taken and I, I caveat this. This is the only place in the world I would go to again before seeing something new uh, is Turkey. Uh, we ah. a, yeah. And we did um, we visited four cities in Turkey, uh, actually for our honeymoon, not because of the honeymoon. Uh, it's just a really cool, the convergence of both cultures, the history. Uh, yeah. Istanbul, uh, the cotton. I've cotton. got a friend that lives in Istanbul and he just, he keeps, he's like, man, you have to come visit. And I'm Good. like, all right, but people that it's people, we Americans have this tendency to believe that people that close to the middle East, 
blow up all the time and stuff. And no, I'm just I mean, trying to tell my wife that it's safe. No, it's safe. Let's go. It's, uh, you know, like anywhere in the world, uh, I think you know everybody wants to do, you know, is working hard, doing well for their, their families. And you get a few bad apples in any culture. But uh, it's from a historic perspective and everything else. It, it's really cool. And if you want to surprise your sweetheart, Cappadocia in the middle of the country, it's, uh, I mean, folks were living in caves up until about 50 years ago there. And kind of like talk about a cool Airbnb, rent a cave, have the snow coming down. And then, uh, you know, what's their drink? I think it's called Rocky. It feels like a Rocky Balbo if you drink too many. But uh, yeah, you, you'll have quite a Oh, bit. man. That's see, that's and, and, and a lot of people talk about like like going to the beach for the sun. Right. That's why people go to the beach because they want to sit in the sun. I want to go places where I can be immersed in culture. Like, like I want culture, I want cultural experiences. I want to learn, like, how do these people, where do they shop? What do they eat? What do they do? What do they do for fun? What do they watch on television? What do they, and Turkey just seems like it's so full of so many different cultural aspects. Yeah. And I think I was jazzed up on the black tea for a while, but we did uh, in our short time there, I mean, uh, met a gentleman, uh, invited us into his younger guy, into his house for the the treats. I, I saw the Friday afternoon culture, the calling to prayer. I think it's beautiful. I think it's awesome. Uh, sure. So much other like straight con people were very open. I, I felt um, to kind of ask anything and get their take, you know, being kind of the center literally of the geographic universe, but also across of multiple religions and everything. Uh, it was just awesome to have very open conversation and get, get a view of it. So, you know, like anything, we had a dynamite experience and uh, yeah. Suggest awesome them. man hey dan tell the listeners real quick if they heard something they'd like to reach out and ask you what's the best way for them to get in touch with you absolutely so as many you know i'm pretty active on linkedin send me a direct message you know say hey i heard you and casey talking i'd love to talk a little bit more uh you know no surprise i, I joke if you can spell it you can get it d krasinowski <laughs> so get a little bit of coin off a rocket dollar but you know also for some of our aspiring sponsors out there folks that are thinking of the one two punch uh definitely reach out to me uh you know there's uh, i think certain programs that uh an education underneath the rocket dollar umbrella sure. that's beneficial to you man and i tell you what dan i you know the little bit that 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 i've learned from you over the the our short time uh, that we've talked and met, you know, we saw each other in Denver and there's just a lot of different things, but I can vouch for, uh, for Dan's, um, um, want to get out and touch and talk and, and be involved and help. I can vouch for it 100%. So Dan, again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I want to uh, just thank the listeners for their time as well. I know we've gone a little over what we typically do, but don't forget listeners, if you like what you heard today, please run down, scroll down and give us a five-star review. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review if uh, you've, you've deemed that it's necessary. But Dan, thanks again. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the day. Cashflow Pro is hosted by Casey Brown, founder and CEO of 3000 Capital a commercial real estate investment firm committed to providing its investors with ongoing cash flow and helping them build long-term wealth. If you enjoyed today's podcast, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified about all our future episodes. You can find more information about us and our investment philosophy by clicking the link in the show notes below. Thanks for listening.